Manatees have also been at risk from boats, and protection policies have long been in effect to try and slow boats down in manatee protection habitats. But the collisions and deaths are still on the rise in Florida's bays and inland waterways. New efforts are underway to learn more about why this is happening, and it's all starting to make sense. Meet Hugh and Buffett. They're half-brothers who live at the Moat Marine Lab in Florida. They're the only manatees in the world trained to take part in scientific research. Their work could help manatees in the wild. Manatees are considered endangered. The, the primary threat are watercraft. Um, it's something very new on the evolutionary scale for these guys, so they're not really adapted to take on that threat. Last year in Florida, 73 manatees were struck and killed by boats. The team at Moat wants to reduce that number, and the first step to protecting manatees is to understand how they perceive their environment. Actually, the vision is fairly poor. If we want to look at it on a human scale, it's twice as poor as a legally blind human. So vision probably really isn't one of their primary sensory systems. It's pretty safe to say manatees aren't relying on vision, so today, Joe's going to study their sense of hearing and touch. So we're working on a behavioral audiogram with our two manatees, and what we're looking at is their frequency range and decibel level thresholds. The hearing test is called an audiogram. Sound is controlled from this computer hub and plays through an underwater speaker. Kim oversees the manatee's response from this platform. All right, so the manatee comes in front of me, and I call for station. And the manatee is supposed to swim down to the bottom and station their nasal crease on the white bar. And then two things can either happen. It can be a no-go or go response. When I'm talking about a go, I mean a tone's going to be played. And if a tone is played and the manatee hears it, they're supposed to swim to our response paddle and press it. And then, if correct, I'll call for bridge, and a bridge is like a whistle, and they'll come back to me and they'll get reinforcement, which is their apple, beets, and carrots. That time, Buffett got it right, and while he has a snack, Latasha records the results. In this case, what we're doing is 50% of the time we're presenting a stimulus, 50% of the time we're not. If it's a no-go response, they go to the bottom, and then I call for tone, and only a light is played. And they have to hold there for 10 seconds. And then if they're still there for 10 seconds, I call for bridge. Buffett's two for two. They're learning what pitches he can hear, as well as how soft or loud the sound needs to be to get a response. What we do every day is we focus on a single frequency and slowly attenuate that down, make it quieter and quieter as the animal progresses at the task until we get to their threshold levels. After about an hour, Buffett gets distracted. A turtle's on him. This turtle's recovering from a boat strike. Good for the turtle, not good for testing, though. Luckily, they've collected enough data to give Buffett a break. And because the study's been going on for months now, Joe has some results. The manatee's hearing is, is fairly good. What we've done is generate a hearing curve for our two animals, and the ranges fall between 200 hertz up to over 77,000 hertz. That beats a human's hearing hands down. Our range is only 20 to 20,000 hertz. So Joe has discovered that manatees should be able to hear boat noise. But the other half of the question is, can they tell where it's coming from? And that question is the driving force behind this latest study. It's called a tactogram. The team wants to know if manatees can feel where sound waves are coming from. What we're looking at here is manatees have a, a unique attribute even amongst mammals. They have these tactile hairs or sinus hairs, hairs that can feel movement. The setup is almost the same as before, but this time, instead of sound through a speaker, this little ball is generating pressure waves. This test will reveal whether manatees can feel vibrations with those whiskers. The movement of the sphere is so minute that even a person with 20-20 vision can't key in on it. So the animal is holding, so I'm assuming that it's, gonna, it's a no-go response. 10. Bridge. I heard calling 10 means that it was a no-go response for 10 seconds. And they're doing extremely well. Uh, we're getting all the way down to 5 hertz with decent detection, which is quite amazing. There really seems to be something else going on and maybe you know, getting into almost a sixth sense or you know, a sense of of distant touch. 
Research like this has never been attempted before, but it could be the secret to understanding how manatees perceive their underwater world. And eventually, this research could lead to new protection laws. You know, everything, especially with this species, comes back to conservation. It's really looking at the broad sense of protecting and ensuring their livelihood for years to come. There's still lots of work to do to determine if manatees are capable of sensing boats in the wild. But for today, Buffett has had enough, so the buffet rolls in. Every afternoon, Hugh and Buffett graze on 72 heads of lettuce. And since they did such a good job with today's research, the only sense they need to worry about right now is taste. Now, continuing tests have revealed the manatees can't hear the dominant low-frequency sounds. Ironic, since the slow speed zones result in quieter and lower-frequency sounds, the ones they can't really hear. So researchers have now developed an acoustic, uh, acoustic alerting device, essentially an alarm that transmits from the front of a boat to alert manatees in its path. Early results of the testing of this device have been extremely successful.